Do you remember how the PlayStation 5 development kit was leaked? It was leaked through a patent, right? Let's Go Digital kind of did a full rendering for it after it was found, and it looked weird, but oddly, it, it seemed to be very controversial with a lot of people, with some people liking it, some people not liking it. I think it was because it looked like a little spaceship hangar or something. Anyway, eventually we got to the point where it was confirmed, and uh, we even had a Codemasters developer for some reason going on Twitter and saying that they had one of these. And then later on, we finally had Wired say that, it, yeah, that's that's what they brought. That's what I hooked up the controller to and played on. So it was interesting to see that leak out right through a patent. Because while patents do provide a look into what companies are doing, doesn't always necessarily materialize into something that us consumers will eventually get our hands on. And that's still true with the dev kit. We'll probably never get one unless it like goes up on eBay, you know, 15, 20 years from now, like how other development kits get out there where people just sell them off after they're not really relevant anymore and the NDAs are up and all of that. But an interesting one has popped up now. It was made public today. Well, uh, Let's Go Digital had found it, it seemed, a few days ago, but they did like a full kind of like cleaned up the rendering on it. And it is interesting, uh, be, mostly because this could go a number of different ways. Now, I've put this under rumor wave, mostly because there's going about to be a heavy amount of speculation in this video as to what this could be for, because it's a cartridge. So here's the slide that Let's Go Digital put out. They also linked to the entire patent. I will put it down below in the description if you'd like to check it. It's out of Brazil, where the patent for the PlayStation 5 dev kit was also found. So again, filed in the same same directory and all of that. Uh, and this is interesting. It's done by uh, Eugen Morisawa, who's the senior art director over at Sony PlayStation. Before we had a cartridge that was for like their their other like handheld toy thing is like the Toyo or it wasn't for the PlayStation. It looked way different than this. This looks much more like a PlayStation memory card, doesn't it? It looks way closer to that. Whereas the other thing looked crazy. It was this weird looking thing. This most people would look at this and say, oh, that's a that's a memory card. Oh, that's a game cartridge, right? Uh, yeah, that's why this is so interesting right now, because everyone's trying to figure out what this would be for. And I know the <laughs> the thing that everyone's immediately thinking of. I mean, we all do when you see it, a game cartridge. Well, you only need a game cartridge or something that moves around, really, because otherwise you'll use a Blu-ray disc. Is Sony doing a handheld? In my personal opinion, I don't think Sony really wants to go the handheld route Again, I, I just, I didn't work out for them with the Vita. I don't think they have any reason to do that. I think their focus is much better right now on the PlayStation 5 and whatever the successor is to the PlayStation VR, mostly because they are the market leaders in VR and they're the market leaders in home console right on home console entertainment right now. So why would they go after something that even Nintendo has kind of shied away from a bit now with them merging their home console and their handheld uh, divisions and all that? I mean, yes, they have the Switch Lite, but I mean, let's be honest, it's playing the same games that their console, right? Hybrid is playing. So even Sony has to be looking at that and saying, eh, even Nintendo is shying away from, from a dedicated handheld that's like on its own. So why would we do it? That's kind of what I'm thinking here. So I don't think this is for a handheld. I could be wrong, but I don't necessarily think Sony is developing a new handheld to release just because I don't, I just don't think it makes a lot of sense for them. So then why would Sony need to file a cartridge? As you could see, the design uh, current status date was five or 11.5. Sorry, that's backwards for me. 11.5. And then uh, you can see the application date was in June. So it was a couple months ago that they went ahead and applied for it. And again, this was found on November 5th. So why would they need a cartridge? Why would they need to at least develop the plastics that are going to be going around whatever is going in it? Well, I have two real theories, I think, here. And both of them are heavy amounts of speculation because I'm just trying to make sense of why they would even go this far. And they went pretty far here. They like designed the whole enclosure. Usually you don't just start designing enclosures unless you have something to go in it. That's the part that's really throwing me off here. It's one thing if they're designing the technology that might go in this, but they're now, they're working on the, they're, they're painting it at this point, right? They're working on the paint, like they built the house and now they're painting it kind of thing here. That's, that's the thing that's throwing me off right now. Well, I thought about the PlayStation 5 immediately because I said, okay, well, they're building up to their next system, the PS5. What would they need this for on the PlayStation 5? And... The only thing I can think of is that they are going to go this route with the PlayStation 5, and I think it's to save money on the initial system. And seeing this, believe it or not, is starting to make me believe more and more 
and I'm not even kidding that there could be a $400 SKU for that PS5. I think there's a strong possibility that they will have expandable storage in the PS5, and there's a chance that that's what we're looking at here. So stick with me for a second. They've told us that there will be uh, an SSD or solid state drive inside the system. Initially, I thought of that and I said, okay, they're probably just gonna, they're gonna solder some chips to the board. They'll, they'll do all the stuff to make it efficient because they can work inside of a closed box to make it as fast as possible and as cheap as possible, technically, right? That That's what Sony would do. But what if they designed it so that it ran through a cartridge connector and they literally made their own like NVMe drive or something and stored it inside of this plastics and then you would actually pop it in. Much like you pop the hard drive into a PlayStation 4 now, it's actually not that difficult to change out a PS4's hard drive. It's very difficult in the Xbox One, I'll tell you that. But what if they do release a PS5, multiple versions, and the one thing that is different is this cartridge either has a 500 gigabyte uh, a storage, it has a one terabyte, it has a two terabyte, and it's all dependent on what's actually in this little enclosure, right? How many you know chips, storage chips and everything they have in there to make that all work. Because there's a few things about this. I mean, it's actually filed under miscellaneous and accessories in Japan. So the, the code anyway that they're filing under would make sense that it could be a game accessory or one that could even be sold at retail outside of the PlayStation 5. Consider that. You go into the store, you had bought a 500 gigabyte PS5 last Christmas, realized midway through the following year that you were filling it up very, very quickly, right? So what do you do? Well, you go to the store and you buy a one terabyte or a two terabyte. You come home, you back your stuff up, you pop this one out, you pop that one in. And then you know, all of a sudden have a one terabyte or a two terabyte PlayStation 5. It would get around the one issue I was having with this, which is that the storage may not be changeable or expandable. This could solve that problem if, if that's what this is. But this wouldn't be rumor wave without some ridiculous speculation. So get ready for this one, because I thought about, okay, what's the other division that Sony has that they might be focusing on right now? And that's their VR. We know a PlayStation VR 2 is coming. They are the market leaders for VR at this point with their PlayStation VR headset. But it is tethered to the, the system. And you know what? That Oculus Quest was it's been pretty successful for Oculus. I mean, within within reason for VR in general. That that's gone over really, really well. So what if what we are seeing here is a plastic enclosure for actual games and Sony is developing right now? internally, maybe set for a reveal next year, an all-in-one headset under the PlayStation VR umbrella. What if they were going to do something like that and then also have a PlayStation VR 2? So they possibly could have two VR headsets on the market. The old one apparently will still be compatible with the PlayStation 5. or so. It, that That's a whole thing on its own. But what if they discontinue that one? They have a PlayStation VR 2 headset and then whatever they want to call the all-in-one PlayStation VR and this is the game cartridge for that all-in-one PlayStation VR. I almost feel like that would be kind of confusing, personally, at retail. But it also does eliminate the need for a game console, all right, at retail. So it does lower the cost of the overall experience. And I don't think every single game would be compatible. And that's one of the reasons they would have these game cartridges. So you can pretty much figure out what's what and what goes where. And this could even be pretty small and actually pop into the, the headset before you put it on alongside probably some storage space inside. That is massive speculation. I don't know if that's correct, but I, I do think there there is some thought put into an all-in-one PlayStation VR headset by Sony, especially seeing the Oculus Quest do so well. It's going to come down to if the technology is there to actually play their PlayStation VR games with what will probably end up being a mobile chipset inside their headset, you know, with good battery life and all of that. But it's certainly wild to see Sony... Back, going back to cartridges in some way. They've at least thought about it, it seems, with this patent. And again, I have to say, if they are doing a patent for what appears to be the plastics going around it, again, there's nothing about what's inside of this. If they, if, if there was documentation on what's inside of this thing, we would know what it was like right away. But they went and had a, a senior artist do work on this to dress it up. That is, that to me means, like I said, it's far along, it's in the later stages, and they came this far. It would be odd, to me anyway, to not do anything with this or have a plan already in place. My money, if I had to take a guess right now, 
is for expandable storage for the PS5. I think that would be really, really cool to have that rather than have it be all enclosed, everything soldered to the board. And you know what? If it fails, too bad. That's the only reason I like this idea. That way, if something does happen to your storage, whether it just outright fails or who knows, you can pop it out. You can buy a new one without having to get a whole new system. And hey, you might as well upgrade while you're at it, right? That, that, to me, that that is way better than having everything closed up. But let me know what you guys think about this patent. I'll leave it linked down below if you want to check it out for yourself. That's from Let's Go Digital, who managed to find it. And it's uh, they put it out today. So this is all kind of happening right now. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments. Your best guesses. And hey, maybe it's not even used. Maybe this is something that they were just kicking around, but... I don't know. This uh, it's going to be interesting, I think, when the PlayStation 5 gets unveiled. I think in February or March to some degree. Thanks, guys, for watching. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if not. I'll see you next time.